that copper foil is but oh come on it can't be that thin impossible for thou gentlemen welcome back to the shop on this fine winter even tight we got a tree that's special from the land of Wiener Schleiden and Dirndl's a beautiful maiden well more like Frankfurters you drive as fast as you fucking well want just don't pass anybody in the left-hand lane. A small community of 83 million people on the banks of the Yangtze, just north of Beijing. This is where this baby came from and sealed for her protection. Hope somebody started the clock. Now, Borscht, I haven't done too many reviews on, on account of, uh, they're not that common as a prosumer tool here. They get the Bulldog, of course, the big, yeah, look at that. This is probably their top seller, which is that big old Jesus uh, breaker. We got a blue ball sack. This is their new offering, Core 18 battery. I believe there's something special with these batteries, but we're going to have to get into it to see the difference. And somebody, a, a patron. Nice uh, signal to noise ratio over there on the Patreon if you want to chat. Mentioned that because Borsch in 93 had purchased Dremel tools out of Racine, Wisconsin, the Borsch, it's a small world as I say, the Borsch abortive tools here, they're get, getting into the as seen on TV market. The batteries for these are the same as for the Dremel. So this, I put this on a charger because the charger what comes with these are 220 volts Euro style Pixies. And I got but 120 volts here in the shop without special accoutrements. So what I did was bought a cheapo charger for the Dremel and it works a treat. 14 doll hairs from Creebest. Cre you can't make this shit up. Fucking brilliant design feature. Look at that. That's right. Square drive on the outside, quarter inch hex on the inside. And it come with, at least it come with a bag. Are you suffering from a surplus of storage? Please enjoy our blow molded cases. I'd be tempted to cheat here. So we'll just throw that right in the bucket bucket. Got a couple of little accoutrement sky hooks and so forth. And at least, you know, if you got a away mission bag for diapers or uh, bringing your ammo to the range or what have you, you put your weed in it. Let's have a look at the features here. And I already hate it. It's got internet of shit, not built in, but you, <laughs> you got to buy an additional part in order to get the Bluetooth. I guess this thing, uh, acts as a speaker you use the pulse width modulated of the driver and you can play the imperial march Ugh. for scientific perspicacity i've envisaged the new test we're uh, gonna take after the patron saying what oh one of the things i noticed here first off the hop they don't tell you where it's made there's no label at all on here telling you where it's made and the battery charger sleek and modern looking as uh, any German a proper appliance should be other than the relay clicking there's no noise no fan noise no irritating thing to uh, mess up your vajayos in case you're making them invoking the name of our patron saint we're going to enact a test in vitro what is normally performed in vivo that is the 12 foot ladder drop yeah. all right we're going for one in the pink sex makes the spot prepare for re-entry in three two one holy old fuck Whoo! close call i thought we were gonna have to retool our entire protocol however it's working the test is working Ooh, that fucking thing sketchy I'll tie you off or something. All right. Once again, for the second time, 12 footer from the backside with the top side flip. 
Oh, that sounded bad. I don't blame this thing for chunking off titty bits. A 12 foot fall in the wrong direction will kill a man. Luckily this borscht will uh, <laughs> break my fall. Key horn act. Oh, I don't think that did too much because it landed right on the socket. The impact driver survived the wearing in. Took one off the nose here, no damage at all. One off the backside, popped out one of the fasteners, cracked the casement. And then on the other one, got the batteria here, and she chunked off pretty good. Clearly, if and you're dropping this from a, we planted to drop this from a 12 footer on the regular, you're gonna wanna get yourself a cheaper model than this because uh, you're gonna get canned. And they have mitigated that 12 foot drop because they give you a, a lanyard for putting around your wrist so it can hang you up and string you up and so forth, get caught in the lace chuck and all that. But, you know, if, if you're that type, you're so worried about dropping a tool, it might be handy dandy. We'll get it. Aha! Uh -huh. Ah, call this the table neck. It's Malaysian. I had a whole thing. I was going to do the James Burke connections things with Pudong and the Bun, the German concession to gun bloat diplomacy in, in Shanghai, but I can't do that now. It's made in Malaysia. 83 million people in that small little village are going to be disappointed. I'll save it for another time. One door closes, another opens, right? The last time I looked up Hong Kongese knockoffs of Winnie the Pooh, my Huawei phone just fucking chewing through the data. There we go, T10. I did her. Malaysia. What a expensive place to manufacture. Well, that's not... To, oh, T8. Son of a fucking did it. Can't win for losing. There we go. China is not that cheap for labor anymore. So it's more competitive. A lot of places moved to AMD's been manufacturing chips there forever. Uh, Sir Dyson just bequeathed his knighthood and then uh, fuck me, fuck you. Or not Sir Dyson, Sir Jimmy, Sir Jimmy. Sorry for my lapse in etiquette there. Yeah. Brexit proponent now uh, living in Singapore. Very nice place to live. Of course, very close to uh, JB, Johor Bahru, just across the border into Malaysia. Very likely where there's some Dyson manufacturing happening. As far as the Borscht, not quite sure where that's manufactured, but somewhere in there with the friendly Brown faces looking up at you, Salamat Pagi and so forth. Salamat, no, what is it? Salamat Patang. It's evening. Boletrima Resit. Pukima. Oh, I gotta get that right through the meeting we met. <laughs> oh, grizzled road warrior tip. I hear you can get pills for that nowadays. Nothing, uh, it, nothing breaks the ice with the locals, like uh, a non-cicator, vile curse word. Whoopsie. I don't know how this is supposed to... Oh, okay. All right. So there's a nitrile rubber bumper on there. Oh, okay. And then there's a... A roo ring or a, a bowl ring just around here to hold this plastic bit on the tip. Ah, what the fuck is the fuck? I keep. <laughs> it just won't come. My hands are getting sore. <laughs> Maybe it's the Bluetooth cocking us up here. I'll take out this module thing. I don't, I don't get it. What? You need an app on your phone to control the torque of the tool? It's. The mind boggles at the stupidity. Or is it a tracking app so that your boss can monitor how many nails you're driving? Is it a surveillance? And maybe they just want your data so they can sell it to the high. I, the mind boggles why you would want this on the internet. But let's take this little blank. This is where your Bluetooth module would go. 
and underneath it, look at that. Beautiful, enrobed in gold, polished balls. Those are pogo pins for interfacing with the PCB that this no doubt uh, would, I don't think it'd be powered, so this would be vampirating power out of your battery the whole time it's on. I don't know if you like that at all. I'm stalling for time here to think of a joke about these beautiful golden balls. But uh, it ain't, oh, Pistol Pete, the pirate. Pe the Pistol Pete, the pirate, peg leg pirate. Shuffle stomps into the tavern. Shuffle stomp, shuffle stomp. With a ship's helm around his dingus. Barkeep looks up from his one ad. Pistol Pete, why the fuck do you got a steering wheel from a ship around your dingus? Arr, Barkeep, you're as astute as you are dull. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> My wife doesn't like that one either. Well, let's look at the state of the mold making here in Malaysia. Not for, generally, you get what you pay for, but... You would think that uh, this being a high-end professional tool, you'd get some pretty good mold makers in there, but uh, patch jobs all around, hand polished and not very well. And then you could see the mold was, or this, this part wasn't sticking in the proper side of the mold in order to rotate it around and get this subs on here, this over molding on here. So they've had to add a little artifact to help hold this in the mold better. You see that little guy right there just done with a with a dremel this tickles me right to bits i gotta i i get a chuckle out of this you can see here well it's the it's the brotherhood the fraternity of humanity this poor mold maker he had a hell of a week this week so a couple little marks in the mold there polish this up it's not holding in the mold hey yeah dring dring you gotta come and fix this well let's just put a little retention slot on there just a just a nub no, it didn't work. Fuck it. Leave it for night shift. Do another one. Come in the next day. <laughs> do another one. Oh, God, this is not working. Let's just do... Let's do... Oh, no, no, I just... Fuck it. I'm just giving her. He's got two slots. <laughs> not one, but two side by each trying to keep this bloody thing in the mold. Poor bastard. Probably took a year off his life. Some German breathing down his neck to get this mold right. Hey, hey, you, you notice anything about this? I, I think it's German. <laughs> you couldn't pack another half a fart into that casement. Look at it. <laughs> Beginning now, at the start, I was born at a very early age. No, we're starting at the uh, Pixie containment device and going into, well, the path, the, the dancing path for the Pixies. One thing I didn't tell you was it's a double action latch. So you can latch it at the one step and the the battery is engaged in the tool it's all one piece together but electrically it's not connected so then you can throw it in a in a bag or a bucket or a service truck or whatever and you don't have to worry about killing the battery or having the thing spin them a thing and while you're driving down the load nice girthy knives here knives go into the terminals real stiff and thick and also wide into a preloaded terminal assembly. So that's nice so that uh, if the thing's weeble wobbling around, there's a bit of give there so it can stay engaged. And as we saw, I dropped it off the 12 footer there and the battery stayed engaged. Normally what happens is it fucks right off in a hurry. Like these uh, Makitas, in my opinion, the, the battery pops off kind of way too easy. Interestingly, we have four terminals here. Normally we would only have three, of course, the positive, the negative, and the temperature sense uh, to make sure that if the battery over, over temps that the tool shuts down. But in this case, we have four. And I can only, I can only guess that would be for data signaling to tell you that you have a legitimate Bosch battery. Here's the back of the brain boxery. I just wanted to make sure this Alum it wasn't just an uh, aluminized sticker making believe it's a heat sink. Not much surface area to uh, exchange heat with the gas surrounding it, but I'm assuming that uh, it was well engineered and maybe very low resistance MOSFETs, so not that much power to dissipate. 
we have the controller here just on a ribbon cable and as we see I already fucked it these are very easy to fuck and I did it so wonderful be no input from that and now I have to use the app because there'll be no input from one of these switches the other thing uh, don't forget you're paying for this right you're paying for the additional uh, the additional PCB board for the Bluetooth you're paying for the additional assembly that's all a manufacturing cost which does get it gets passed on to you interestingly they've got a 40 amp automotive fuse in here so that's kind of nice it, maybe it'll protect the brain box from uh, letting the smoke out of its arse end or maybe not but it's a good idea or maybe it's only in case this thing goes full full closed circuit all the time and then pops the fuse so I don't know if the fuse is here to protect this guy or this guy is or the fuse is just there to protect the wire so you don't have a fire that could be as well as I was saying it's tight in there I'm gonna factory delete this Bluetooth module I will never use it I'll just get rid of it yeah surprise surprise it's glued screwed and tattooed right in there at the very least you get rid of this spacer and then you got a spot to hide your weed when you're going into camp don't got a suitcase it no more so that's that's operator comfort a very thoughtful of borscht unfortunately for us this is a, a completely epoxy potted so no way well we can get in there but uh, we'd have to sacrifice this driver we got a bunch of interestingly surface mount or not surface mount the through hole devices through hole devices and sir a mix of through hole and surface mount and some through hole capacitors rubicon brand <laughs> unfortunately they've already crossed and there's no going back now an artifact of having that clamshell packed right full is the connectors are midstream instead of having the connectors at the board they've had to go and just solder in the tightest connection and then connect out over here in the rhubarb away from everything uh, if you look at the back side here they've added look look at the amount of copper or rather solder that they've wave soldered on there somehow unless that's a wire it might be a copper wire oh that's interesting now let's have a look at that oh yeah very cute that conductor is copper copper wire so it'd be a non-magnet wire just no uh insulation on it at all and then affixed to the board and then of course they would wave solder this see all of the solder what's been applied there what a essentially you have a vat of liquid solder and then you pump it along so it goes over uh, a, a trough and as your board comes along it gets wet by that wave of solder hence the name wave soldering and sometimes in small components it doesn't work very well because there is a, a, a shadow effect and you get tombstoning of the components and so forth tombstoning these brushless motors are very power dense you get a lot of power out of a small form factor but normally it's hard to get this the rotator the rotor rather out of the field and we see the field here piece of junk it's already delaminating I don't know what could have caused that <laughs> I mean, it still works I, I tried the trigger and on the back bearing here pretty funny out what, what outdo brand <laughs> outdo do something brand and on the front side of course this ground shaft indexes into the hammer assembly so the fan straight blades bi-directional one thing you can see that's not the greatest is well you can see the fan blades themselves right through the top quite a not a small hole very easy to get something in there and break all of the fan blades clean off of her now this rotor as you see quite small for neodymium permanent magnets an artifact of having it made in a real wet environment now this very likely well i would say it's probably not an air-conditioned factory 
or the supplier doesn't store these in an air conditioned area because this high silicon steel laminations are already starting to corrode. Looking down into the field, we see the three Hall effect sensors for the three phases of this three phase motor. Of course it runs on DC, but DC pulses. And the Hall effect sensor monitors the position of the rotor by monitoring the uh, magnetic field. Now that appears to be potted with a thermoplastic, which might melt off. It could be a thermoset plastic, but eh, come out of a gun of some sort. And this is cute in that it's super chintzy looking. It's too, well, there's a, there's a heat sensor on there. It might be just a diode and they're, they're reading the, uh, the voltage drop across there. And as the temperature goes up, the voltage drop drops. But look at the wires, silicone wires, silicone insulation wires, but there's but one strand, just the tiniest whiff of a conductor in there. Nice tight gearbox. Nobody likes a sloppy gearbox. That fits together nice on that spigot and shoulder. Nice big beefy hammer on there. It's a forged hammer, so that's good. Forging is the way to make steel the strongest. It's also, well, any metal. If you need it to be absolutely the strongest it can be, it has to be forged. Oh, with the size of the motor and those crappy laminations already uh, busted up. <laughs> uh, no fault of the operator. I was getting worried, but this is a beautiful gearbox, all steel, nicely, nicely machined, nice big bearing in the backside, uh, sealed bearing, and then also a seal for the shaft, what for keeping the lubricating uh, grease in the planetary gear set, nice big planet gears around a, a ring that is actually machined into the casement, nice and clever and compact. Of course, the spring here is what provides the uh, the back force for these spinning hammers. They have to get spun up to speed and then hit the dogs on the anvil and come up and over in order to twack it again. And there is a timing issue. So um, you'll see, we did a bunch of slow speed stuff, maybe with this guy. You could see that it needed to be timed because if it didn't time, if the RPM and the, the hitting of the anvils wasn't timed, what you would get, you would get a double hit and that second hit wouldn't have any jam to her. It, it's easy to say you could add some weight to this and it would hit harder, but that's not the case because there's a whole, a whole other case of uh, harmonics being involved. You need to get the harmonics right in order for this to hit at its absolute most. Now bear with me here, I'm not quite sure if it's because I'm half gooned or half brain dead, but it's not entirely self-evident how this little foreskin comes off. And you gotta get the foreskin peeled back in order to get the, the anvil out. But we'll, we'll have a look at what we can see. We see a metal, uh, a centered metal hardened bush in here. And an interesting little additional feature is that it's located on the inside of this shaft. So that's good that it's located in two spots. I don't like this plastic bit. I think at the very tip where you're doing the most work, this plastic bit is very, gonna be very prone to breakage, especially in the cold. I see now why the uh, back plate of the housing was so hard to stiff to come off. It wasn't the uh, real tight machining tolerances, the fact the assembler fucked up the o-ring, peeled it over, extruded a bit of chunk off there. Luckily, we're just holding in grease, so no big deal on that. Looks like an ovoid cross-section o-ring. I mean, we've all done it, tisk, 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 but that there is a rookie mistake. According to the sales wanketeering, this is the big deal here, this core 18 volts. It's got the bigger cells, even a bigger deal than having Bluetooth on your fucking driver. It's showing us they have cooling fins here, which is an interesting, interesting material chosen for the cooling fins, high density polyethylene. Not particularly well known for its uh, heat transfer coefficient, but 
Who are we to judge? Now, these larger cells, it kind of strikes me as a red herring. That is fish cured with saltpeter. And they don't want you in there, or if they want it tamper evident. It does say, it says seal, but it doesn't say uh, void warranty if removed, which of course in the States is illegal. But it doesn't strike me as particularly, I mean, bigger cells, big deal. Why don't you just add more 18650 cells? It sounds like a great idea that you'd have larger cells. However, does it really make any fucking difference? It might even detract because instead of nice, the, the packing, instead of nice little cells you can pack in there, you have these great monstrous cells. Now the port side platen, this is the one what cracked. Not my, my, much meat there. There's none where it cracked, of course, because it's all gone. We got glass fiber reinforced nylon, uh, FR, which is uh, fire retardant. It's got some bromine or something in there, some kind of compound. And some something else. What's a uh, TPE? So some butylene. Never seen the white TPE. But this wasn't had no adhesive. And when she come off, there was all kinds of crinkling and stuff, like tinfoil sound and stuff. And this is a interesting. We've not seen this before and interesting with a question mark. We have copper leads instead of the nickel with but two spot welds and already, despite having no adhesive, already one of the spot welds come off of her. I'm not, I, I'm questioning. This, this brings up a lot of question marks in my mind, like, what the fuck were they thinking? Okay, let's listen to this. I'll just stick that right. Chaw, 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 chaw. You hear that? Gives me the crinkles right up my spine. Cranji. Yeah, this guy does not want to stay on there. I will now play you the song of my people. Change your careful and now I'm going to bust off the patina here. Silver plated contacts as to whether they're copper, which would be bad because copper work hardens excessively. Or, uh, I'm out of beer here and I should probably speak into my microphone. Fucking dullard. I got to get this thing done quick. Milk and the golden goose here. Vertical integration. We're using a Robert Bosch fuse instead of like a fusible link what has you know those the, the nickel ones are real thin in one spot and that's what melts out and protects the cell instead we have a proper a proper fuse still though why are they using just a foil now copper of course has much higher conductivity and uh, ampacity than nickel for the comparable cross section but at the same time nickel doesn't have the problem of work hardening and that foil i mean let's measure that it's it is completely enrobed in a pre-formulated amulite and cannot everything vibrates everything is a spring it's called not service factor but serviceability you can have a bridge what's plenty strong to withstand the load however if it's weeble wobbling all over the place ain't nobody going to use it because they're scared shitless of it in this case, that copper foil is but, oh, come on, it can't be that thin. Impossible. Four thou? Four, it, no, oh, these jaws got to be worn out. It can't, it can't. What? Four thou? Come on, man. How much are these batteries? How much do they cost? How much is an extra 20 thou of copper going to cost you? What the fuck? That's just value engineering run amok. I'm sure it's perfectly capable of physically withstanding the current required but, and 
couple that with the fact that now you only have five of the big batteries. That means each battery needs to deliver more current, more amps than if you had the smaller battery. I'm not convinced of the, it'd be interesting to see once these are in the field for any amount of time, what the longevity of the batteries is. Echo 9 Kilo Fiber, British Columbia. Yeah, I got nothing. Gonna have to light, lit, light up the battery mooch bat light, see what turns up. As for now, this thing is a fantastic experiment, either in market wanketeering or actual battery usage. You can see the packing, the packing factor is not as good as with the smaller, obviously, with the small cells. As far as this experiment, why they would use the bigger batteries, I don't see other than marketing really what the point even of it i don't it, as with all good experiments it brings up more questions than it answers why why we'll leave this on the healing bench for the time being see if it doesn't uh, spontaneously reassemble and if not we'll put it together and and uh, you can't have all the proper fasteners when you put her back together then it might chooch properly but we'll We'll give her a what for and how is it twos it's how you doing and so forth. In the intro, keep your dick in a keep your dick double locked and separate from its ammunition at all times unless you're a member of a club and at a facility where it is licensed to be used. The day is the morrow in the cold hard light of day and absolved of the false nostalgia of a Deutsche Qualität and possibly beers after a fitful night's sleep, I, tossing and turning all night. Foil, plastic dingus end, pinched o-ring. This fucking thing, it's a pro tool. A pro tool, and we see a lot of components distinctly unskookum. Not even remotely fucking decent. This, to speak nothing of the Bluetooth module. This thing is enough to not make me want to buy any Bosch tools. Same as the Milwaukee. You know, the only people, it's going to be that that guy that's going to want that Bluetooth feature. That, that guy, you know the guy. Don't be that fucking guy. Or possibly going to be like the owner's son, you know, the, the <laughs> who just inherited the construction company and needs you to be logged you know calls you up on your telephone hey uh johnny how come you're not uh, logged into your drill there are you because i'm fucking work well they, oh, i gotta I, I gotta make sure that you're on the right tps report i wouldn't buy this again and th these these big batteries they're nothing new they came in the in the hilti big old battery back probably decade decade and a half ago they were in there these batteries, however, the Hilti, needless to say, are distinctly skookum. Uh, look at the, the Milwaukee, right? They got that overmolding, sort of a buffer. I, I don't understand why they would have a plastic bit on the very tip where you're doing all your work. Seems to me like that that would bust right off. We're going to have to put her back together and give her a test out, but the components on their own... There's a lot of things in here that are like, what the fuck over? Cooling, was this supposed to be over molded with aluminum and they, they, they went with plastique instead? What, what the point even is of plastique cooling fins? Doesn't make a sense.